Bugs, beware, exploratory testing is here. Hi everyone, and thank you for joining my lecture. First, let me tell you a joke. A software tester walks into a bar. They order one drink, a million drinks, zero drinks, minus one drinks, and a lizard to top it off. Everything works perfectly. Then, an actual customer walks into the same bar. They ask where the toilet is. The bar then explodes into flames. This is exactly what, what exploratory testing is all about. Treating the software like a real user would. So hi everyone, my name is Jana Margolin. I've been a test engineer at Google for the last 12 years. Before that, I was a QA team manager at an e-commerce startup, which unfortunately no longer exists. And I enjoy finding bugs in pretty much anything around me. You can also see my contact info on the slide. So today, as I said before, we're going to talk about exploratory testing. First, let's differentiate between a more traditional testing methodology called scripted testing and the type of testing that I'd like to present here, exploratory. In a nutshell, scripted testing is basically an execution of pre-designed test cases during the testing session or cycle. Exploratory testing, on the other hand, is more like a creative investigation of the software when test cases are designed mostly on the fly. A little to none test design is done in advance when exploratory testing is carried out. Let's see some examples which can better explain the differences between these two types of testing, scripted and exploratory. Let's start with ordering drinks. During scripted testing, one of the possible test cases would be ordering a negative number of drinks, say min minus one. We will then expect the bar to issue an error message, saying something like, um, the number of drinks you chose is invalid, please choose a positive number of drinks. During exploratory testing, however, we would carry out a test case, which will resemble an actual order taking place in a bar. For example, a party of five people all getting different drinks with custom requests, such as please add extra ice to my drink or make this cocktail without a cucumber. I personally cannot stand cucumbers in alcoholic drinks, so that could easily be me. Another use case we'd like to test is paying for our drinks. During scripted testing, a scenario such as entering all zeros instead of a credit card number might be carried out. We will then expect once again to receive an error message, something along the lines of uh, the credit card number you entered is invalid, please enter a valid number. During exploratory testing, we would be more interested in a testing scenario, such as paying part of the bill by cash and part by credit, as often happens when a group of friends go to the bar. Our third example will be related to sitting and making a reservations function. For instance, during scripted testing, we might test a scenario such as trying to reserve a million seats and expect to get a suitable error message saying the number of requested seats is too big, please choose a valid number of seats. In exploratory testing, we might want to test and see what happens if a party of five people wants to move to a different table after the bill has been opened and drinks have been served. This is a scenario which often takes place in an actual bar, people moving from the outside to the inside to get some air conditioning, or switching to a better position table than the table they were originally assigned to. Now, let's summarize the differences between scripted and exploratory testing in a more general way. Scripted testing is mostly focused on verification of the software versus its requirements. Exploratory testing is all about software exploration, as the name suggests. Think Dora the Explorer, if you're familiar with the animated series. This is exactly the concept. In scripted testing, test cases are designed in advance, and the testing begins once there's a complete test plan in place. In exploratory testing, on the other hand, testing cases are mostly designed on the fly during the actual testing. 
In scripted testing, the script is the king. A test case must be included in the test plan for it to be executed. If a test case is not in the test plan, it doesn't exist, it won't be carried out. In exploratory testing, the tester is the queen. Since the test plan is determined on the fly, there's a, rot there's a lot of room sorry, for testers' experience, intuition, and judgment. Scripted testing can be summarized as divide and conquer. Features and parts are tested separately. Exploratory testing can be summarized as unite and rule. Features and parts are integrated and tested within the same user flow. For instance, in exploratory testing, we'll start by making a reservation at the bar, uh, continue with showing up, getting our table, ordering drinks and food, moving tables to a better location, paying the bill, and then leaving. Okay, here are all the aspects we talked about in the last few slides, summarized into one table for easier reading and, screensho and screenshotting if you would like to take a picture and save it as a reference for future use. Okay, now let's see when we'd like to use each type of testing. Scripted testing is a great methodology. It is well suited for testing high-risk products, such as financial applications. This approach is very suitable when there is enough time for documentation and planning. It also ensures high test coverage and is very thorough. So scripted testing is great, but exploratory testing is invaluable. And let's see in which cases and why. The first use case in which we'd like to use exploratory testing is getting a sense of how release ready is your product. If the basic user flows are buggy, it's obviously not ready to be released. For instance, if ordering a drink in a bar doesn't work, you know that the bar still needs some uh, improvements and some work to be done before it can be released. The second use case for exploratory testing is an agile development cycle. Exploratory testing is well suited for the agile development approach as it is more adaptable to changes and keeps up with the short scrum cycles. A change made during the development sprint can be immediately included in the next exploratory testing session. Exploratory testing is the way to go if you have a small or non-existent testing team. If the team is small, the tester actually needs to focus on the testing rather than on the documentation. If the team doesn't exist, the developers should test the product in an exploratory fashion. It is also advised that each developer tests the user flows developed by their teammates and not the ones they themselves worked on. This ensures a fresh, unbiased look on the user flow and its potential problems and pitfalls. Exploratory testing is a great methodology uh, to be served as a base for creating a detailed test plan later on. User flows must be a core part of the plan to ensure critical paths of the product are tested. And last but not least, uh, exploratory testing is a great source for automation scenarios. Common user flows must be automated. This way, we'll know immediately if a bug has been introduced into any of them. Okay, taking into account everything we just learned about exploratory testing, let me ask you a question. How would you test the bar? Since this lecture is pre-recorded, let me answer the question for you and give you some ideas. And of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, feel free to add your own later on at the Q&A session. So first of all, of course, ask to use the toilet and make sure the bar remains standing, critical function at any bar. Second, a scenario that you might want to consider is paying the bill by parts and at different times. Also splitting the bill unequally, tipping part in cash and part by credit. All of these are common scenarios which take place when a group of friends goes to the bar, but some live at a different time than others, and as a result, need to pay the bill separately. And one last scenario um, that comes to mind is the happy hour a very common practice at most bars. 
We'd like to see what happens if we start ordering drinks during the happy hour and continue ordering after the happy hour ends. Do we still get our complimentary drinks if there's a one plus one deal? What about the use case when some of the people at the table arrive during happy hour and some arrive later? Do the, later, sorry, do the late arrivals still get to enjoy the happy hour discounts or not? This is also something to consider. There are many more possible exploratory testing scenarios which can be used to test a bar. If you'd like to tell me an especially interesting scenario you have in mind, I'll be happy to hear. Here's my contact info once again. Thank you so much for listening and cheers.